Welcome everyone to my review of the Bandai Tamashinations SA Figure Arts, The Suicide Squad Harlequin. And this is the first release for this movie and the only one so far announced. And it's probably the obvious choice since Harlequin is the most popular character. We have seen her previously for Bandai in the original movie Suicide Squad and the spin-off Birds of Prey. And you can see that all three of them are kind of similar in terms of the size of the box. Since Harlequin is a small character, and you don't get that many large accessories. So this is of course the latest DC character for SA Figure Arts and I can't really recommend SA Figure Arts for your DC line simply because they don't make a large enough collection. Of course they do make some very great figures but I just feel that Mayfex and Mezco do it better because they have a lot more. For example the Dark Knight, Justice League as well as the original Suicide Squad all three lines they only release three to four characters and I just feel that they need to make a lot more. You can see at the front, we have the nice black and red colors, which obviously matches the theme of the costume. We have the logos, the stickers, a cutout of Harlequin, Margot Robbie, and then it has the titles and pictures on the sides. And then this side, it wraps all the way around with the logos. And then we have the top and the bottom. And then you can see the back, we had the figure in different poses. Uh, no sign of any weapons at all like in the promos so i think a lot of people may be disappointed with this figure but i'm still going to review it and see what's inside uh, maybe it is a great figure even on its own so we do get the usual background a black color and the manual to show you how to put on the accessories and here is the Harlequin figure inside its packaging. So here is the Harlequin figure right out of its packaging known as the extreme rogues version we finally get the classic colours with the black and red costume which we have been so familiar with from the first animated series to the comics and I believe Bandai have made the right choice to release this version of the costume even though it was only a brief moment in the movie it's probably the more popular choice in terms of figures to go for the classic look and uh, maybe they will release one with the long red dress later on but we're gonna have to wait and see but at the moment I think this is a good choice to have this one this look is actually inspired from the video game Injustice with that short jacket and even though Bandai did release a line of those figures as well including a Harlequin I actually don't have that figure so I can't really compare them but it would be interesting to see these two side by side. So before I begin with the actual look of the costume I want to say that the reason why they didn't give this one in the first movie was because uh, they were more anti-heroes rather than straight up villains so they probably wanted the Harlequin to look a bit different to what we are normally accustomed to and since Deadshot and Katana were also in red and black maybe they wanted to mix it up and I believe it was the right choice since this look is pretty iconic now let's take a look at the actual costume I really like the contrast in terms of the way they've done the black and red and all the way to the details of the ponytail which I didn't notice in the movie so we have one side red the other side black and it's the same for the jacket as well as the costume inside all the way to the bottom and the shoes and we also have the belt here with the HQ Harlequin and overall it's a really nice design and the back of the jacket it says live fast die clown which is probably a message to Joker and then we also have the goggles sitting on top of the head sculpts, which are not removable or movable at all. And then we have the face sculpt of Margot Robbie, which I think they do actually nail each time. I really like the way they've sculpted it. And it definitely resembles Harlequin from the film. And you can see from the first movie version, it was pretty good as well. As well as the Birds of Prey version. So each time Tamashii Nations have done a really good job with the Harlequin face sculpt. So now let's test out the articulation before we move on to the accessories. And for SA Figure Arts it's normally pretty standard in terms of the movements of their figures. So for the head sculpt it goes side to side no problem. It actually rotates all the way around. It can move forwards this much and upwards this much. There's good movement there. And then you can tilt it side to side as well. And it does move the ponytail and then for the arms they stretch side to side which should be the same on both sides and they can go forwards backwards 
upwards and just rotates and therefore the elbows they bend this much uh, there's no rotation on the lower half of the arm but there is rotation on the hand and I believe there's a small hinge like they normally do and then for the upper half of the body side to side this way as well as tilt side to side this way you can crunch forwards and backwards this much and for a character like Harlequin I feel that there isn't need for any dynamic poses you just need to get the basics and it can tilt side to side for the lower half and a little bit on this side uh, if you crunch it forward a lot it does actually take the figure apart so you've got to be careful with that and I'm gonna have to pull it back in but it can go backwards a little bit forwards a little bit and articulation is okay I guess there's nothing too good about it uh, the legs rotate but in terms of backwards, not so much because this part is kind of in the way. But it can kick forwards and rotate a little bit. And then for the knees, they bend this much. And then for the whole shoe, you can actually rotate it side to side all the way around. And I believe there's a hinge on the toe. And it can go this way a little bit as well. So articulation is okay, you're just going to have to take your time over it. Um, really depends on what kind of pose you want Harlequin to be in. But it should more or less do the main poses that you want for a Harlequin. And now we switched up the accessories. First up is the head sculpt. So we do get an alternate version which is a smiling or grinning version. Which I do actually prefer the look of this. I feel it's a lot more livelier and brings out the character a lot more compared to the original version. And in terms of the hairstyle, I believe it's more or less the same. Maybe some slight changes to the ponytail in the way it's kind of just more lowered compared to this version. But everything else I believe is the same and the goggles just sit on top as well. So for the face sculpts, I do actually prefer this one as a display. For the alternate hands, first we have the open palms. The second set is the grapple hands to hold on to the ponytails like we see in the promo photos. And the first set of hands seems as though it's another grapple hand with a slight pointing of the fingers. It seems as though this is meant to be for a weapon, but of course this figure doesn't include that. Maybe Tomashi Nations are heading in a different direction and maybe to be doing something like we've seen in other companies where they include a accessory in a different character. So maybe a future release will include the Harlequin weapons. We're going to have to wait and see. Otherwise, I don't really see the point of having these alternate hands. And here I've used the gun from the first Suicide Squad figure. And as you can see, it does kind of work. And for some reason, they've included an extra left hand, which is another grapple one, which I can't think of anything else other than hold on to the ponytail. And here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the other SH Figure Arts Harlequin figures. The one on the left is the original Suicide Squad and the one on the right is the Birds of Prey version. And in the future, I will probably do a full comparison of all three Harlequins put together. So stay tuned for that. And in case you didn't pick up the previous Harlequin figures, here it is next to the other Suicide Squad SH Figure Arts with Joker and Deadshot, which I think also makes a great display together. So now for my final thoughts of the Harlequin, the Suicide Squad, SH Figure Arts. I feel this could have been a really great figure since it's the first time we have the classic colours in movie form. There is a good sculpt, great costume design, the face has good lightness and of course there's plenty of alternate hands. But it does somewhat feel incomplete with the lack of weapons. I don't know if they rushed out in bringing this figure before the movie release. But I believe even in the promo photos they showed her use a rocket launcher of some sort. And even a bag which she carried in the first scene could have worked. So to really get the best out of this figure, I think you would need to use the previous accessories or get some third party ones. Other than that, I think it's a good addition to the DC line as we now have three Harlequins. But in my opinion, I still like the first one the best. And hopefully they would bring more characters to this line and given a choice, probably a Bloodsport, Peacemaker or Rick Flag.
So overall, I'm going to give this a 6.5 out of 10. It's a good figure, but it just lacks weapons to make it one of my favourites. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.